Uh, this one's aimed at uh, Keith Jeffrey. I may be wrong. I think I read a quote recently from yourself about some burnout. Would that be right? Um, I'm just wondering, something that Philip maybe touched on, that where do you see um, some commemoration going in the future for unionists? In 20 years' time, will it still be uh, as prominent as what it is now? Well, I mean, it's, there's a general problem about sort of commemoration fatigue. Um, um, I mean, we're already seeing, I mean, with the Titanic, you know, which is, it's beyond, so I would be on collecting stuff and I stopped because it's beyond the sort of satire. No, no, it's, you know, you have to hope that it goes well for many reasons, uh, as no doubt they did in 1912. But, uh, uh, Are you making but jokes about the Titanic? I'm afraid so, I'm afraid so. But there is, but there is but it's the same with the it's the same with the war. Um, you know, I've spent quite a lot of my professional life studying catastrophic slaughter on an industrial scale, and it's important, but, you know, it's, it's not very nice. And there might be an inappropriateness, or maybe it's a way of, in which we can accommodate. The only way we can actually engage with the First World War is by finding some positive meaning in this. Because if we were to look at the full horrors of yeah. this, it would be impossible. We, we just couldn't, uh, couldn't bear it. Um, and I think, though, all history is contemporary history. Um, the way you look at the past is very much defined from the position you are in the future. And one way in a post sort of Good Friday agreement to Ireland, we can look at the, these parts of the past is because there's quite a lot of business being sorted out and it, it, you know, it's not relevant. Now, there, there'll be moments in the future, it's difficult to predict, but certainly, the, the, I mean, women's history is, you know, has, has, has had a great sort of flourishing over the past sort of 20 years or so. Um, medical history is growing, there's whole areas there. Um, 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 the history of childhood and children. You know, what about those? There's, a, I was, there's one of those picture books from the Derry Journal, is it? You know, that they've produced from time to time. And there's a picture at the Cenotaph of three children with, with wreaths wearing their parents' medals. Now, what about those? What, you know, what's going on there? What did they think was happening? And, of course, the sources are really difficult for that. Um, some of the sources, and some of the good sources, and we're and perhaps using more of these, are sort of literary people writing novels. I was thinking you were talking about your man Fitzgerald and the White Feather. There's a very interesting novel by St. John Irvine, who turns into this terrible sort of unionist ideologue um, uh, in the end. But he's a home ruler. He's a, a Redmondite at the beginning of the war and a manager of the Abbey Theatre in 1916, uh, spectates the rising then goes and joins up. But he writes this autobiographical novel about a man who turns out to be managing director of the Abbey Theatre in 1916, um, and quotes a, a radical, an old radical pal from East Belfast, where he's brought up, who complains about the recruitment in the war, old men sending young men to die. It's the whole inappropriateness of these guys saying go, uh, which Willie, or John, Willie Redmond refused to do. And then there's this wonderful line, he says, and those wee bitches with their white feathers <laughs> ought to be well scalped. Shame on them. Uh, um, but, you know, and you get a sort of vividness in that. And maybe those are the kinds of sources we ought to be looking more for.